In our final lesson of object-oriented PHP, we are going to learn about encapsulation. Encapsulation defines what can access the internal behavior and property of a class. So let's take a house class, for example. And we're going to say the house has a temperature. And we're going to set it to 68 degrees. Next, we're going to say, hey, we can turn the temperature of the house up. So turn temperature up and then the number of degrees we want to turn the temperature up. Next, we're going to say, OK, change in temperature is going to equal zero initially. Change has to be less than degrees. And we are going to do change plus plus. Next, we're going to say for each loop, for each degree change, this temperature is going to equal this temperature and then plus one. And then we're going to ver dump the house temperature. Just like that. And then we're going to do this temperature. Next, we're going to copy this function. And we're also going to say turn temperature down. And the only difference is instead of plus one, we need to do minus one. You'll notice this public keyword. And we covered this a little bit in previous videos. This is what defines the access to our temperature property, the access to turn temperature up, and the access to turn temperature down. If we were to create a new house object from our class, we were to simply say, OK, house, and then we're going to turn the temperature up 5 degrees. And if we run this in our terminal, we'll get 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. The house temperature is now at 73 degrees. But what if we took this a step further? Temperature doesn't change immediately. So what if we added this sleep function? This tells PHP to, hey, stop. Stop executing for one second. We're going to actually mimic how turning the temperature up or down inside your house acts in real life. We're going to say it takes one second for a degree to change, for your temperature inside your house to change. So now, if we rerun this, 69 degrees, 70 degrees, 71 degrees, 72 degrees, 73 degrees. Your house is now 73 degrees again. That worked exactly how we wanted. And we were able to mimic a real life scenario and say, OK, when we change the temperature, there is a delay. We represent that real life delay using the sleep of one second. But we have an error. We have a problem. Our temperature is public. So if we wanted to, we could actually just say, hey, house temperature equals 72 degrees. And then we could just redo this and we have gone from the 68 degrees our house temperature was originally at automatically up to 72 degrees and then it starts incrementing this is wrong we don't ever want the user to directly be able to change the temperature outside our class we want to protect the temperature so the next accessor we'll use the first one is public externally you have access to change and use the properties or the behavior, aka functions. The next accessor that defines encapsulation is protected. What's protected do? Well, when we protect something, notice that now we can't directly change our temperature. So now, instead of going from the temperature at 68 degrees directly to 72 degrees and then implementing the proper behavior, we're saying, hey, you always have to use the function. There always has to be a one second delay between each degree change within our house. So of course, if we open this up and we rerun this, 69 degrees, 70 degrees, 71 degrees, 72, 
and 73 degrees. That's proper behavior. That's the difference between public and protected is on public, we are able to directly access temperature, right? Right now we get this red squiggly. That red squiggly is there because it's protected. If we make this public, again, we are able to directly access temperature and bypass the expected behavior. We don't want that. So that is the difference between public and protected. There's one other really cool feature about protected, and this is going to be in comparison to private. So private acts very similar to protected, right? If we were to try to access our house temperature, it's gonna air out, it's not gonna let us. And that is because we have set the accessor, the modifier of our temperature property to private. So what's the difference between private and protected, right? We know public, we can just access it. We can just directly set the temperature. We don't want that. But what's the difference between protected and private? Well, check this out. What if we were to extend house? We were going to say, I don't know, greenhouse. And we simply said extends and it's going to extend house, right? Now we're just gonna say, okay, greenhouse is a new object or instance of the greenhouse class next we're gonna say okay greenhouse can turn temperature up it can turn temperature down and the greenhouse is also able to access the temperature and we do this through the function the greenhouse even though it extends house it has to still follow the same blueprint that house is defined. So greenhouse still is not able to directly update the temperature. But the greenhouse will inherit the temperature property, the protected property of house. Greenhouse will inherit it. And we can prove this by simply running the same function. And house temperature 69, 70, 71, 72, and 73 degrees. That works properly. But what happens when we change it to private? Will this work? Will this work properly? Let's try it out. The answer is yes, it does work properly. Even though it's private, it works properly. But if we were to override a function and we we're going to say, okay, public function, turn temperature up, and let's actually just copy this directly just like this notice that it does not access temperature even though it's the exact same function in the child class has the exact same public access exact same method name or function name the exact same parameters everything is exactly the same so why can greenhouse not access temperature well, it's because temperature is private. Private means that temperature is only accessible within the class the private property or function is defined in. Protected, however, is only accessible within the classes defined in and any child classes. Notice that the temperature red line, the red line under this temperature when it was set to private went away. So again, if we do private, this way or out, greenhouse doesn't know about temperature. The greenhouse, the house temperature is a private property and it's private to house. Protected, on the other hand, is protected from the external world. The external world can't directly access temperature and set it, but child classes that extend from house still have access to the temperature. So guys, that is the difference between the public protected and private accessors or modifiers. That is what makes up encapsulation within PHP. Encapsulation defines externally what can access the internal properties or behavior of our class. Again, public is externally accessible. Protected 
is only internally accessible and is inherited by children classes and private is only internally accessible and not inherited by child classes. So that is the difference between the protected, sorry, between the public, the protected, and the private accessors or modifiers on a class's properties or behaviors. I hope that was useful, guys. If this was uh, insightful, helped you understand a little bit about object-oriented PHP, uh, like and subscribe, and I will keep these videos coming. This is the conclusion of our object-oriented PHP series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope I was able to simplify a lot of this stuff. And I definitely recommend going through this series more than once if it didn't click. Um, it's understanding the basics of object-oriented programming, whether it be classes being blueprints or objects being specific instances, or the difference between static and instance functions or static and instance properties, how abstract classes are non-instantiable but you can define behavior or how interfaces contractually bind classes that implement those interfaces to have behavior. And of course, closing with encapsulation and how you can set properties or behavior of a class to be publicly accessible, protected to the class and any of the children that extend from that class or private, only accessible internally within the class. It is defined and not even accessible to the child classes. All of this stuff, is hugely hugely helpful it's it's the building blocks of creating solid foundational expandable reusable and frankly more entertaining more engrossing more uh, just enjoyable architecture to work with within your software applications so guys that's all I got today this is Zachary Warren with clean code studio clean code clean life Sipping